everybody, welcome back. So today we're gonna do a really fun activity and we're going to learn about how to really see and become really good observers to improve our drawing. So what you're gonna need for today's lesson is your sketchbook and a pencil. So make sure you have both of those with you. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is you are going to draw a picture of Mickey. So I am only going to give you about two minutes to do this. Um, so flip to a blank piece of paper in your sketchbook and I am going to give you two minutes to do this. On your mark, get set, go. Okay guys, so time is up. Now don't feel all you know, frustrated and nervous. The point of this was to be really fast and quick. It's just an exercise. Okay, so I did this exercise too, but I purposely drew my Mickey wrong. So off to the left, you can see the original drawing um, or an accurate rendering of the drawing here. Um, so you got Mickey all outlined. Now, take a look at my drawing over here to the right. It's pretty good, I'll give it that, but what is wrong with it? There are some things that are definitely wrong with my drawing. So I want you to think in your head, or you can even say them out loud. Um, what are some of the issues that are wrong with Mickey? Okay, so some of the things that are wrong are the ears. The ears are way too small. Um, I have his eyes looking out towards us. They're not off to the side like they should be here. I also have his body facing forward and he's not turned to the left like he should be. His shoes down right here, I put a little gap between the shoes. There should be no gaps between the shoes. Um, they should be touching in fact. I feel like I'm missing one more thing. I might be wrong, um, but here we go shoes, his stance, eyes, and ears. Okay, so did you know that 50% of drawing realistically has to do with your observation skills? So when you draw something from your memory, your drawings never come out as well as they would if you're looking at a reference. So for example, if I was to tell you, draw me an eyeball, I would probably get a lot of these kind of football shaped weird kind of little eyes. Instead, if you're actually looking at a reference, you'll get something so much more realistic and correct. 
Okay, guys and gals, so what I'm going to have you do is I am actually going to have you watch this YouTube video. So I'm going to include it in our um, Google Classroom account. Um, I also included it down here if you want to type that in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you could do it that way. So I'm just going to preface this video. This video is very old. Um, probably, I think I looked it up. It was made back when I was in college, so I'm going to date myself here. Uh, like back in 2006, maybe 2000, like I think it was like 2006 to 2010. So most of you were little itty bitty kids or maybe not even born yet. Um, anyway, so this is a lot like the movie Inside Out. Um, this is clearly a uh, college project that these two girls probably put together um, for school. But I love, and the, the quality is not the best, but I love the idea and what they're talking about. And I think it's really worth your while to watch it. So um, we're gonna stop the uh, PowerPoint right here and then I want you to watch this video and we're gonna talk about it in just a moment. Okay, so we're gonna just quickly go over the video really fast just to talk about that before we get into the different trips, the different tips and tricks. Okay, so the, in the video, you know, the girls talked about how a lot of the times we draw what we know about, you know, an object, like a tree, okay, it's kind of triangular, but we're not really drawing what we see. So in order to do that, there are some ways to fix this and to make your drawings more accurately. So the first thing we need to do is we need to turn off our memory and we need to draw what we see not what we know or remember about an object. So you need to actually look at something and not just, you know, remember what a flower, for example, looks like, okay, a flower has a circle center and it's kind of got these rounded petals. No, look at a picture, pull it up on the internet, get a reference, it's gonna come out so much better if you're actually looking at something versus kind of drawing it from your head. The next thing that you can do is you can turn your paper upside down. I use this tip constantly um, as a professional artist. Um, so the idea behind this is when you turn something upside down with your drawing as well, um, you're actually, you kind of forget about what you're looking at. You don't focus on, okay, I'm really trying to get this hand and it needs to look like a hand. Instead, or like the face or the nose, it helps you kind of turn off what you are trying to recreate, and it helps you focus in on the different shapes uh, within the picture. And it gives you a whole new reference point. It make it does really make it a little bit easier to kind of realize, like, oh, this is you know a little bit off. I got to change it so, you know, the chair comes up. You know, the chair doesn't go straight up and down. It, it kind of kind of uh, oh, I can't talk. It kind of curves here. Um, so it really is there to just kind of break it down and make you refocus on what you see and draw more accurately. Another thing you can do is talk it out. Actually verbalize what you are seeing. So for example, I have a picture of Tigger here. So if I'm talking out while drawing or, you know, I'm saying what I'm seeing, it kind of helps. Okay, so for example, Tigger is turned. His head is tilted back. His arm comes up and overlaps onto his belly. His nose is the um, is lined up with his hand. Um, this left eye is covered slightly by the nose and the right eye is a little bit lower. So you're just verbalizing what you're seeing. It kind of helps you again to not remember what you know about Tigger. Okay, Tigger has stripes and he's got like a long tail and a pink nose. You know, it really helps you slow down and look at what you are seeing and drawing what you're actually seeing. All right, another great thing you can do is actually um, picture where things line up. I kind of talked about that, you know, briefly, um, with the Tigger one. So for example, I have this little still life here. And I love this little diagram because it kind of shows, you know, things where things are lining up and meeting. Okay, so for example, uh, my apple comes about halfway up the side of this 
box and it should come just a little bit further down uh, beyond this canister here. So it helps you kind of gauge and figure out how big and small things should be um, in relation to one another, also how close they should be. Um, you can also kind of gauge and look at the negative space of things. So let's say I'm trying to get this handle here and I can't get it quite right. You know, maybe instead of trying to focus on the positive space of the handle, I'm gonna take a look at that background space and we kind of have this like half a heart kind of ear kind of shape. So sometimes looking at the negative space to help get a more accurate drawing helps too. So if I'm trying to get the edge of this apple, Maybe instead of focusing on trying to get this apple edge right, I'm gonna try to focus on recreating this background where it's kind of this like little mountain peak here to get an accurate rendering. So using the background and looking at the background as a shape is also a really good tip. Um, so jot this down. So these are two things that are really important. So the first thing I want you to jot down is what a reference is. A reference is a source of information that is used in order to determine something on a work of art. So make sure you jot that down. The reason we do this is because when you write something down, you're more likely to remember it. All right, one more time. So a reference is a source of information that is used in order to determine something on a work of art. All right, next, let's talk about proportion. Proportion is the relation based on size between the parts or objects within a composition. So that has to do, again, with the composition down here with the still life. How big or small things need to be um, in relationship to one another. All right, so proportion is the relation based on the size between parts or objects within a composition. All right, so we have another activity that we need to do. So what I want you to do is you are going to turn to a clean page in your sketchbook, unless you have this little worksheet here. On one side, we are gonna draw a picture of SpongeBob from your memory. So I'm gonna give you guys 30 seconds to do this. Now, I don't want you to cheat, I want you to draw it from your memory, because I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna blow your mind to show you how much better your drawing is going to become from a memory drawing versus a reference drawing. Okay, so I am going to have you guys start now. All right, so I actually gave you guys a little bit more time to do this. All right, than the 30 seconds I said. <laughs> okay, so what I'm about to do on the next slide is I am gonna put up a reference, and I want you to draw what you see. Not draw from your memory, but draw what you actually see. All right, here we go. Okay, so take a look at your drawing. It might look somewhat like SpongeBob. You might have his big eyes, you might have, you know, his buck teeth, his tie, but does it look exactly like Spongebob? 
And my guess is no, and that's okay. That's actually the point of this exercise. So what I'm gonna do in a moment is we are going to draw another photo of SpongeBob, but this time you are going to use a reference that I'm gonna put up on the screen. And I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do it. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do this time is you are going to draw on the right side of the paper and you are going to be using the reference down here. Um, now I'm gonna put a bigger one up on the next slide for you to really use, um, but we're just gonna talk about you know, how to get yourself started. So for example, when we go to draw this, take a look at some of the things with SpongeBob. For example, his eyes overlap, they're off to the right hand side. His eye actually touches his cheek. Um, his arm comes down and bends over the tie and touches the side of his body. Um, oh, here's a big one that everyone always draws his head going up when they do this activity. It really isn't going up, it's going kind of down and then down again, so make sure you have that correct angle. Um, his, let's see, like his finger, the thumb should be almost as high as the tongue here. So pay attention to those, you know, specific details. And I promise you, your drawing is going to be just, um, it's going to be so much better than your previous one. So here we go. You're going to get two minutes to work on your drawing, okay? And there's no cheating. There's no point in cheating. I want you to, to see, like, how you actually do this. All right, here we go.
your last challenge for the day is you are going to choose one of our three superheroes here. So the point of this is we are going to practice your skills, your observation skills, and we are going to draw one of these three superheroes. Um, now I have different levels of complexity, so, but I want you to choose something that is going to challenge you. So don't just pick Spider-Man because you think he might be the easiest or Batman. If you really think you can handle, you know, doing something as complex as Deadpool, I really want you to go for it. Um, now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the grid method. And the grid method is just a way to break your image down box by box. So you are just going to draw one box at a time. So for example, if I was to start down here in Spider-Man, I would start down here and I'm going to notice that it goes up to the corner and then it goes again to the corner and you're just going one box at a time. So it, it takes this whole, you know, kind of intimidating, somewhat complex superhero picture, but we're only drawing it one box at a time and we're chunking it down. So as you are slowly drawing one box at a time, over time you're going to have you know, this accurate drawing as long as you are really using your observation skills and noticing where those lines are hitting the sides of the box. So let's take a look up here um, at Spider-Man's head. So right here we kind of see that um, it doesn't quite touch the corner, but it kind of comes up and over almost to about halfway. Now sometimes, again, Take a look at that negative space. So if I'm tr struggling to get this box here to get the shape of his head right, maybe I'm going to pay attention to this kind of shape. Uh, let me grab my little pen. pen, pen, pen. Maybe I'm going to pay attention to this shape over here versus trying to replicate this line accurately. So if I'm trying to you know, just focus on the negative space, sometimes it's a little bit easier um, to draw it in that sense. Or turn your superhero upside down. That was something we talked about in this lesson. Or um, talk it out. Remember